Oh, it's over already? Oh, okay. Time for Takafumi's arc. I'm your host of Spidey, and joining me today we have Karafib. Hey! Pepe. Ahoy hoy. And joining us for the first time, Mega Oscar. Yay, that's me. Yes, it is. How, how does it feel to be on your first podcast, man? Oh, I don't know how to begin, I don't know how to continue, and I don't know how to end. I have no clue. <laughs> just what? just wing it, man. Believe in Go yourself like Takafumi believed in himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just have to... Full, go with full Tomoya, full of determination. Power through, Madagascar. Yeah, I'll go power through and go get this <laughs> podcast done and everything. It's just. Pepe, I believe you have our recap today. Yes, I do. Freshly and, squeezed. Uh, <clears throat> freshly squeezed recap, 100% recap. Anyway, whenever you guys. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just start whenever I'm ready then. Yeah. I'll time <clears> you. <throat> okay. We return to Takafumi 4, where former sports star Takafumi, a shell of his old self, is dragged back into the game by Tomoe and his prototyping skill. He starts his intense training regimen. Dan! 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 After his intense training regimen, Takafumi does it. He finishes the race, and though he doesn't win the race, he wins the girl. He wins himself back. Hooray, Takafumi! Yeah. Nice one. Clapping. Was that was that thirty seconds? That was thirty-two seconds. Good enough. <laughs> that yeah. was fine. It's kind of like this route was really this arc was really good, but um, it felt so small, and it's just kind of like oh, that's it. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely, definitely. That's this arc in a nutshell. None of it is really bad, but it's there's not much of it. Mm. It's the length was like two or three hours. I remember finishing it, was it like all one in one hour. Night. Oh yeah, maybe I think. It was really yeah, short. Yeah, it was short. It was short. Well, I'll bring up something many people said in the forum. I don't know if it's too soon, but. I feel like Kanako deserved a bit more development there, I don't know, the way mm. she thinks about the whole situation. Maybe a, maybe a rule, well, maybe not a whole rule, yeah, but I something. Think I don't know about it's that. Well, it's worth it potential. Do you think there should have been more? Yes. Well, yeah, but that, that's it, I mean, I think it's the thing that we should have seen the way she thinks about the whole situation in general, not just yep. some random things. She's a, she has some wasted potential there, and it's not that her power was bad, but she deserves some more lines, she deserves more. Uh, that's my whole concern about this route. It wasn't bad, though. I don't know. What do you guys think about it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel mm-hmm. like Kanako is very much just a, a plot device in this arc. And that makes me sad, because they include this whole character just to be a plot device, and I feel like well. she should get her own story arc too. Where's her development, you know? Last, last arc. Potential. That's kind of an interesting thought because I think I'd consider her much more of a plot device if he got her own, her own arc. Mm-hmm. No, really. Continue. Because then she would, she would just push the f- story forward, but like this, she's, she's just there because that's her character. That's who she is. Yeah, but that's we much so. more of her as her own person rather than a plot device. You think mm. so? Really? I feel like there was a lot of like psychology there that were just wasn't explored. She was just a love interest. Just like mm. I want to hear <laughs> about her own motivation and her goals. Mm. And she was to... she was very in the background, I think, in this route mm. compared compared to the last route where she took like not center stage, but she took the side stage. She was pretty. Yeah, she was pretty important last arc, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, but they really built her up to be more. Than she was in this arc, I feel. She hmm. definitely had an important role in this arc, but I think it's because she had an important role with Takafumi and this whole thing that uh, it would it was better for Takafumi that she didn't interfere, because they're in a very volatile situation. I think like her interfering in the wrong way might have just caused uh, Takafumi to give up and so on. So I guess she might have been afraid, you know. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, yeah. I think I think it's what sums up uh, what we want to happen is we just want more Kanako. Yeah, yeah, that's Because she's, she's just a good character, yeah. 
Yeah, but anyway, about this interfering thing, I mean, it's true that she shouldn't interfere with Takafumi, but she can as well interfere with Tomo, yeah, and Tomo, you just... Mm. Even Tomo, go guess what comes out of that. Not anything yeah, really that's, well. That's true. She didn't get many lines. So so Tomo, dead, even, yeah, even, so. even Tomo didn't have much screen time in this route. Which is in this fine. arc. <laughs> but, 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 but Tomo, she's so it's precious. It's not her arc yet. I know. Oh, okay. I'm not going to continue that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Excellent. this is very much not a Kanako <laughs> arc, it's very much a Takafumi arc. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's why it's called Takafumi arc. Yeah. Right. Right. Isn't it uh, the Takafumi arc after it's all? Not, it's not. Oh, so really? We call it that. That's what we call well, it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then we call it that way because Takafumi appears in there, it's not Kanako's all after right, all. Uh, that's right. But I have to say, on some level I can appreciate the fact that Kanako doesn't get her own arc, because really she can resolve her own problems herself. Like, just just being with the other guys is all the resolution she needs. Well, she was being very stubborn about like not accepting her dad, and I, I believe that wouldn't have been resolved if uh, Takafumi didn't, you know, finish his Yeah, exactly. Arc. And I think in, like... She resolved her own problems by, you know, having Takafumi resolve his problems. Because uh, I guess her emotions are still very much connected sure. to Takafumi. She still, yeah, it's very precarious. She still, she still loves him. It's so sweet, even though she treats him like shit. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Well, not just Takafumi, though. I mean, Tomoya and Tomoyo are also there and also important to her. Mm. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's... And it's also true. treated like shit by her. Also <laughs> yeah. treated like shit by her, yes. You know you're important to Kanako if she treats you like shit. <laughs> oh. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Warning sirens, guys. Alright. Um, but anyway, we're not here to talk about Kanako, are we? We're here to talk about Takafumi. Ha 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 ha. I guess I have one thing to talk about uh, in this route and how it connects to the previous route. Like... Anyway, we all know how that if you don't beat up the thugs in the last arc, uh, you failed to convince Takafumi to tell to Tomoya about his past, right? Uh, and it's interesting how this, how that event connects to this event where Tomoya suddenly gets the courage or maybe stupidity to practice typing Let's just tutor. call it stubbornness. Stubbornness. I did to, really you know, like this. Yeah. yeah, this this was one good part. Like one thing that I don't see in other stories, where like, okay, this story is over, but we're gonna use this story to like help strengthen the characters in the next story. You know? Yeah, that's it's one thing I really most like visual about novels. Tomoyo after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I think there's something that has to do with mm. the way it's structured. I mean, the, in, normally there are mm. many routes, but here it's arc after arc after arc, so it's easier to develop. This is a lot more cast. like an anime than a visual novel. Yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah, that's it. That's but at the same thing. time, you have the uh, the advantages of a visual novel in that you can also see what happens if you fail. Yes, and, and that's horrible. what I love. That's what I love about visual novels. And uh, so I. Arc didn't... No, I, I thought I thought it was believable at least, like how Tomoya needs that strength to power through. I, I've always liked these sort of plots of like trying to force yourself into an uncomfortable situation to overcome, to overpower someone with your willpower, um, and like challenging someone to something that you know you're probably not very good at, but like winning anyway. Um, <laughs> This is a thing that Kia's done a few times before. It's in Clannard, mm -hmm. it's in Little Busters, but I still really like it every time I see it. Yeah. Anyways, there's one character we haven't talked about yet that still plays a big role in this route, and that is Tomoyo herself. Oh. oh yeah, guess what? This Vienna is called Tomoyo after. She is here Tomoyo and she need. is relevant, although not as relevant as Tomoya and T Takafumi, of course. I'd she like does... to hear. She does contribute to bringing this situation to its end. She does, yes. Mm. Well, you know. Oh, yeah. She's yeah. the one who brings up the problem. 
Yeah, the problem about Takafumi and she's just she's also the up. one like at the race. She's the one who tells them, "Hey, let's uh, cut him off at the at the middle and convince him to keep on mm. going." And it's funny yeah. how they're able to catch yeah. up to him despite Takafumi being the actual runner. <laughs> well, they're taking shortcuts. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, they are taking shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I t well, Tom, yeah, Tomoya gets just too tired and I think. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, after the last oh. arc where Tomoya didn't tell Tomoya anything, it was really nice seeing them tag team this one. Mm. Like yeah, actually I communicating agree. with each other. It's I, I guess it's because uh, like in this portion, Tomoyo wouldn't really be uh, controlled by her emotions that much as compared to the last arc. So that's he did actually. Bullshit. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> she was entirely controlled by her emotions this entire arc. She's um, a very emotionally driven person. Um, she's her, her whole thing was like, I'm going to make you two happy no matter what. And kind of just like, uh, uh, I guess. okay. <laughs> right, let, let, let me rephrase that. It, 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 her emotions didn't push her to do something that Tom, Tomoya didn't want her to. Yes, that is a yeah, better way much. of putting it. Okay. <laughs> it shows the more positive sides of that aspect of her. Which yeah, I like. Yes, extremely yes. Extremely pushy, it, but that yes. can be a good thing. It does help. Like, if she didn't get that idea to just, you know, go to the middle and uh, support him, then he, wouldn't, he might have quit in the middle and we'd get a bad end. Thanks, mm, Tomoyo. There, yeah. there wasn't any, like, bad end apart from the one we saw last time, is there? Nope. No, there's I don't, not. I don't oh, know. That's in the bridge to the next arc. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I guess if as long as you got the flag for for the last arc, you pretty much, and you don't fuck up the choices, you pretty much uh, uh, get the end of this arc. Hey guys, what about Takafumi? We didn't talk about him yet. Yes, Ooh. let's talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> the foreigner. Oh, the foreigner. Oh yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh god. Uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to point out something interesting about Takafumi's character in this arc, and that's that he had to confront his past and get out of his uh, comfort zone. I mean, he was talking about, um, he was trying to go with his past, but this past kind of in interfered with his present. He chose to stay away from his past and instead chose his present and lived a normal life. But at the same time, he still loved Kanako, and I don't know, maybe he saw... There's... There, I don't know, that's... This confrontation, this dual personality, is something that really got me, that we don't see in other Kiss titles, or maybe it is, there's there, there's that, but it kind of faded out with other major themes. So, yeah, mm. that's something interesting. Also, the way he saw the um, his family, yeah, I mean... Uh, the track and field team was kind of his family and he saw um, uh, his family in Tomoya's house in the household and he feared that if he brought up his past maybe that I mean, family would have uh, it's been something torn he apart. goes into again and again where uh, looking at the past versus uh, trying to ignore it but Takafumi's arc does it in a rather unique way because Takafumi is pretty much happy the way he is and he could go on like this but we still we still try to solve what's haunting him because mm -hmm. that's just the better alternative it's, and I think, it's not like he isn't still haunted by the I think that's, that we, uh, that's right. a good message that's a good message that uh, we should all you know, try to learn from uh, <clears throat> I mean even though we're happy now if there's still something pulling us back, we have to step out of our comfort zone and, you know, resolve these problems. And sometimes we can't do it alone. We need the help of our uh, of our sister and our our sister's boyfriend and our ex girlfriend and people like that. And our dad's illegitimate illegitimate child as well. <laughs> I, I I'm not thinking of anyone specifically, Thanks, by the way. <laughs> Just putting examples out there. <laughs> but um yeah I don't know that's a really nice message actually Pepe um just the idea of not 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 being content 
with um, the status quo, I guess, and to not be afraid to ch confront our past and challenge these things that may not be as good as they could be. It's not a bad message. Yeah, it's like, we're happy, but we could be even happier. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sort of thing. Hmm. Yeah, um... Hmm. Anyway, about 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 Takafumi, um, it's interesting though. Like at the beginning of the story, we see I, well, I saw him as this this uh, perfect guy who like didn't seem to have a care in the world, didn't seem to have any problems, and we find out that oh, he's actually flawed. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's it's good to see that kind of character depth at least. I guess a lot of his current personality does come from his past with the track team where he learned yeah. to just let go and have fun with everyone and now with Tomoya and Tomoyo and Kanako he can do that again. But that doesn't ch change the fact that his past issues are still unresolved. Yeah, there's... well, I don't know if I should bring this up now, it's kind of a crossover in between... Uh, Tomo, uh, Tomoya, I mean Tomoyo's after and Planet, but I think Takafumi sees the his family in the track in the track and field team, and then he also sees that in Tomoya's household. So he's he may, maybe Takafumi sees the track and field team in Tomoya's household with Tomoya, Tomoyo, Tomo, everyone together, and he's afraid that if something bad happens or the, his past repeats or it's or it's brought up, then maybe something's going to happen to the family and Tomoya is going to stay away. Yeah. Tomoya and Takafumi will go yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, you know all this. I don't really yeah. know. Mm. That's actually a very good thought because that's exactly what happens in the bad end, really. True. Because, because they bring up the past, it all falls apart. Yeah, uh, because they bring it up in a way that he isn't ready. No, I just realized something while uh, Mogalskar was mentioning this. Uh, when when this thing happened, like when when Takafumi got got with Kanako and while the while her dad was still alive. Uh, Tomoyo wasn't there, was she? She was still like out battling thugs. Yeah, pretty much. So Takafumi was pretty much alone at that time, and I'm sure that he couldn't find solace in his mother nor his father. So, in a way, I guess at the time that that was his family. True. Yeah. Make me realize then... like the death of the coach was akin to the death of his father. Well, his. And that, I guess, it kind of strengthens how how uh, how affected Takafumi was by all this. At the same time, it's kind of ironic. He lost his one family in exchange for saving the other. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's we going deep now. Oh, I don't know if I'll say this. I think I said it before. I don't know if I should come mm. back to it. It's the Tomoya... Okay. It's the Tomoya after on Clanet was over there in, in Clanet. Uh, I think in Tomoya's route, she mentioned that everyone has a family. And it's a family. And I found it interesting, the, something that Tomoya said, yeah. mm -hmm. being applied to the others. I mean, in Tomoya yeah. after. Yeah, it is um, interesting how like he talks about like the track team almost being his real family, but then when push comes to serve, he did want to save his biological family. Um, yeah, it's so sad to be rejected by the one person you truly treat as a father figure like that. It's yeah. so sad. But it's um, also something you almost never see in key novels, like the out, the fallout of trying to kill yourself. Like, yeah. how his uh, foster father, I guess I can call him, um, didn't really forgive him for his suicide, uh, his attempted suicide. Yeah, that's, that's uh... Uh, definitely something that Key hasn't... Like, Key touched on suicide maybe a tiny bit in some of its arcs, but never to the extent of, I'm like, that's sort of like, I'm never going to forgive you for this. Even that sort of like... It's a very... the whole theme of, like, not being able to forgive someone is quite 
untouched ground. It's quite unkey. Well, as we see by the end, uh, he believes that uh, he actually does forgive. Well, Kanako forgives Takumi. That's Kanako. For, uh, and that's, yeah. I think Kanako had that authority because of her her yeah. relationship to Takafumi's past and knowing exactly yeah. what was going on there and also being as someone who like wasn't on the best terms with him I guess and also being the guy's daughter that too yeah, yeah. actually I helped? I guess when when Takafumi jumped in front of that car was he really like intending to kill himself or I I mean I know he was he planning was to not. fix his family so he must have been confident that he wouldn't Which die I think he yeah, I don't think he was. Um, that sounds <laughs> that sounds pretty crazy. I don't know. That's weird. It's like, oh, I'm just gonna be hit by a car. I'm not gonna die. I just one thing I really liked about this arc was um, it kept thinking back to Cape's route and how that had a similar plot of someone who used to run, and his whole thing was that running was his reason for existing. Oh, yeah, well, at the mm, same maybe time, it's the that's, it's, this is kind of like the antithesis to Kape arc because Takafumi exactly. doesn't give up on life because he lost his running. In fact, he doesn't well, really care about running at all. It's just something no. he could do in his past. Yeah. Um, uh, the whole message of, I want you to run so you can stop running, <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> it really um, is, yeah. 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 Wanting him to stop because he wants to stop instead of because he feels like he just can't handle it anymore. Yeah, it's just the difference between running away and like finishing, you know. Mm. Yeah, well, I see it in a different way. I think it's kind of a metaphor. I think Takafumi has been stuck uh, yeah. running in the race of life. So he's been stuck and he has an advanced in life because he's been kind of he didn't really quit running normally so he's got that kind of uh, if he quits running then he'd uh, continue running the and um, well he'd go on on life with kanako after all together so it's that kind of yeah. message for me and then there's also like the whole like the dual meaning of running being like you know, running psychologically from something and actually physically running. Well, one, th oh. one thing I guess I should still bring up, since I did bring it up in the last podcast, is that I still think that this arc 2 plays into the theme of the past unexpectedly catching up to you and you dealing with it. Yeah, that's it? more much more obvious in this arc, I think. Eh, was it? Was it unexpected? Because, uh, well. yeah... In, it was unexpected yeah. in the way that Kanako's appearance forced him to do it. Yeah. Without Kanako returning, he never would have had to deal with his past. Hmm, that's true. Yeah, well, maybe Tomoe also played an interesting role here. I mean, she was the one to bring up the mm, issue yeah, to Tomoe yeah, anyway. That's true. So I think Tomoe is also relevant. Also, I mean, it's Kanako too. Something that of wouldn't have happened if the past didn't randomly catch up to them but they they face it and they deal with it and i really like that message yeah and also what i see here is that well more of the message of this arc is more a message that goes on through throughout all the vian is that things just happen in life and you just can't do anything about them and the fact that those things happen is maybe just the a bunch of coincidences like you said kind of had Kanako had to go back um, or to come back to Takafumi uh, Tomoyo was there, Tomoya was in a relationship with Tomoyo I love in key novels when we get to, su to support someone else in a relationship instead of just being the protagonist and getting the girl mm, like yeah. away yeah. in this case oh, like man. Tomoya is already in a relationship but he can help someone else like struggle with his, arc, terms of his. his arc is already finished hmm the more I, we talk about this, the more I realize that I like Tomoya after for many of the same reasons I like after story, which is that life just doesn't just end with the root. It goes on yeah. beyond that. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's it, the it, after philosophy is strong in this game. It definitely, <laughs> does, it definitely does feel like another after story, because after story also has multiple arcs. 
what after story doesn't do is they take the the learnings from the past arc and put them into the next which i think is cool here all right so the end of the arc when he finishes the race he he doesn't win the race but he wins the girl yeah um <laughs> That scene Wonderful. was absolutely that scene was absolutely sweet. I loved every second of it. I was giddy like a schoolgirl. <laughs> yeah. I do like that he didn't win the race because realistically mm. he shouldn't win the race. But yeah. it doesn't matter that he didn't win the race. It just No, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, that's something I really like about Tomoy after. I mean it Tom after keeps it real, but still it's able to come yes, to convey exactly. a message. Yeah, even the just the by finishing, you can thing. you know achieve something. Especially for a person yeah. in Takafumi's uh, position, I can I can imagine the winners looking over at the, their their little group, wondering why why are they so happy they didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's it's good that Kanako was able to like rekindle her feelings. Well, I guess it, they never really disappeared. But uh, I, sh more than anything, she probably regained her respect for Takafumi after he finished because she realized, oh, now he can, he can f stop running, not by running away. So what? yeah, yeah. Well, something I wanted to go back to the, this last scene you mentioned. Uh, everything was like just fine. It was fine, but. It felt a bit sudden. I mean, all of a sudden there was Kanako who hadn't been all that much, yeah. all that sweet besides Taka for me. I mean, it was maybe a bit too sudden. I think that uh, we should have seen more of uh, Kanako because there wasn't really a lead up to that point. <laughs> I, I kind mm -hmm. of agree with that, but at the same time, I, I also find it believable. I guess it would have been more... It would have been more impactful if we saw Kanako, like Kanako's internal internal what do you, conflict about this while it's happening, mm. you know. But uh... I mean, you do kind of see her conflict in that one scene where she talks to Tomoya, where she's like, "Okay, how long is this punishment gonna continue? Wait, what? You're not oh, yeah. punishing him?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the only way she can think of it. It's a Batsu game. That was funny. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it's. I mean, it's fine after all. Just, it's not that mm. I hate it. It was, was just a bit sudden. I'm not really yeah. complaining about it. Well, that's fair enough. It was good. Mm -hmm. It was a lot it, better than the Tomoya arc. The it Tomo, good. Tomo, Tomo, Tomoya. Uh, Tomoya arc. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I still gave it a three though. I I gave it a four. No, I gave it a 3.5 because it missed a bit of potential. I gave this one a 4. That 10 point rating system. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with a 5 point. I'm fine with a 5 point. I gave it a 4 because I thought it was good. That's basically... If it, if something's good, it gets a 4. If something's average, it gets a 3. So there. <laughs> hmm. There's one last thing about the arc I want to bring up though, and that is the actual ending of the arc, which is when the screen oh. turns white and we see oh, yeah, typing fuck. on the screen. With someone, a certain someone, narrating how the story continues from there. Like how Takafumi's story continues from there, rather than the story of Tomoyo after. Hmm. I, uh, I actually thought that that typing was Takafumi. What did you guys think after seeing that typing? Oh, I, yeah. I didn't it, know. it talks about Takafumi in the third person, so it couldn't really be. Well, if, if, if Takafumi was writing an anonymous blog entry, for example, he'd be talking about himself in the third person, and that's how I viewed it. <laughs> Yeah. I don't just, remember. <laughs> that's just that's just like that's just like my immediate reaction to the ending scene. Like, oh, is this Takafumi typing? Mm -hmm. He's the computer geek after all. Yeah, well, we, do we do see uh, we do see the typing Tamaya much early in the is, story as well. Tamaya kind of got good at typing, didn't he? Hmm. Yes, he did. Sure. Yes, he I'm did. sure he'd be able to type a paragraph or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. The since first I've, time that typing appears it. is directly after the prologue. Finally. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. My gut feeling is it's Tomoya. Um, that's just makes the most sense to me. Just reading this, it's just like, yeah, he's he's a protagonist. It makes sense for him to be narrating his own life. Yeah. As a person who's already finished the game and I know already who it is typing that, uh, just like yeah, to compare my thoughts back then with my knowledge now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, I think it was Tomoya, but I don't really know why. It just felt like That's that valid. to me. Is is there is there anything you can talk about like the text in that uh, typing scene, Carfian? Because I don't remember the exact words. Oh wait, wait a sec, wait a sec. I have it here. I'm reading it. It, uh, it was there yeah. when he decided that he would take on the role of the teacher yeah. next. Uh, he would teach what his teacher had taught him to those children who are standing still, not having found the reasons mm -hmm. to live. Uh, and she would be there supporting him. Yeah. Well then, join us next week it. for the Tom War podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't talk about I can't talk about that quote without talking um, about the rest of the the story. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that that's that's fine. That's fine. That's a good segue. You know, like doing a <laughs> oh, that was better. a joke, by the way. <laughs> We're so it's close to the end. Segue, let's though. let's hurry up for the last sprint. <gasps> Finish. Power through, Pepe. I forgive you. Just go for it. Run, Tomoya. It isn't over yet. you still got oh things God. to overcome. Anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. All right. Let, let's end this here. I'm your host, Spidey, and thank you for joining us once more for the Tomoya After Book Club podcast. We'll see you next week for the Tomo arc. Go! No, Aspie. <laughs> Shut up. Fuck you. <laughs> Do not use that. It's similar. You're, you're not allowed to use that.